Jason here at the DVE store. I recently did a live switched multi-camera Facebook live video and I, I put quite a bit of work into preparing for it as far as setting up all the gear and uh, of course the script. But uh, I wanted to do a little behind the scenes video for you today and just take you around with the camera and show you all the different bits and pieces and how they all work together. And uh, so hopefully something you see will be inspiring to you and you'll learn something. So if that sounds good, watch on. I'll give you a kind of a wide overview of the whole setup here and then we'll move in and start with the cameras. So I have two cameras set up here. I have a Blackmagic Design Micro Studio Camera 4K, which is the overhead camera shooting straight down at the white table here. So what I've done is run uh, 4K uh, out of this camera via SDI and into this Odyssey 7Q Plus. So the cool thing about this is it's got the uh, the Titan HD extract functionality so you can take a 4K signal and you can pull an HD window or more than one window out of that signal. So that's what I've done here and you can see I've got the uh, wide overhead shot and the close-up overhead shot and I can set this up in the menu to output both of these um, via the SDI output. So that's what I'm doing. I'm outputting two uh, just 1080p signals, one being the wide, one being the close up. Now, here's one of the cool things about this is if I go to this view, I can actually move this HD window around if I switch to the uh, overhead close-up, you can look at our program monitor here, and now I'm moving the window on the 7Q Plus, and it has a built-in smoothing motion. But it's just kind of cool because I can I can pan around on that, and then of course cut back to a wide shot if I want to. So that's uh, the one camera which is kind of like having two cameras, which is pretty sweet. Uh, here's my selfie cam, which is uh, my trusty Lumix GH4. And uh, so, um, so I've got the two outputs uh, here, and the output of the Lumix. Those are both running into the ATEM Television Studio HD, which is down here. I also have my MacBook Pro running into the A10 Television Studio HD via HDMI. I'm just using the regular HDMI output uh, here, and that's running right into the A10 down here. I want to show you really quickly what I did on the Mac to get the HDMI output to uh, go right into the ATEM Television Studio HD without issue. So you can see I'm in the uh, display settings and I've got two displays represented. This is the MacBook Pro display. This is the HDMI output and basically it's detecting whatever's on the other end of that output. In this case it's the Black Blackmagic Design um, you know, HDMI. So what I did is I set it to scaled and then I set it to 1080p and I put the refresh rate at 24 Hertz so with my ATEM set to 1080p 2398 um, this works perfectly my three camera angles plus my computer input are all running into the ATEM down here. Now the program output of the ATEM is running via SDI just all the way along the wall here over to 
my Mac Pro. Let me bump up the brightness here a bit. So we're using a mini uh, recorder, an Ultra Studio mini recorder from Blackmagic Design. Got uh, SDI in there, Thunderbolt to the Mac Pro. And then we've got uh, Mimo Live is uh, the software package of choice here. I've got the ATEM software control running. And that's just to make sure that I've got my my audio coming through. I'm using this Audix SCX1 hypercardioid mic. And that is running into this Mix Pre D. And the Mix Pre D is outputting into the GH4. And the GH4 is just embedding that into the uh, HDMI signal, which is running down to the ATEM Television Studio HD. Testing, testing, one, two. So it's coming through. And you can see it coming through on program out over here in the ATEM software control panel. And then we have Mimo Live over here. So we have the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder set up as one of our sources. Okay. And then that source is live. I named it the ATEM program feed. It's live in our layer stack here. And then I have the ATEM controller layer, which is really sweet because then I can switch the ATEM right from within Mimo Live. So I set up some keyboard shortcuts so I can do it right from here inside of Mimo Live. There's my selfie cam, my wide shot, close up, and oops, and three is my computer. So I can switch all those here. And I've got some other layers set up like uh, graphics, a video clip lower third, DV store logo, etc. and another graphic I can show. But the cool thing is, is I'm controlling Mimo Live via Wi-Fi on the iPad. So here's my little control panel that I use to switch the entire show. So this is a one-man show. It's just me in front of the camera and doing things on the table here. And then I can switch to my different angles here. Um, I can start the show, which will start it recording and streaming, if that's what I want. Um, stop the show. Um, I can set up my video clips that I want to play back, my graphics. Like, for instance, I have a shot of the um, rear panel of the V4 HD. I hit that. Boom, it comes up. I'm done with it. I click it again. It goes away. Um, I've got my, my graphics here. You can see this as I click here. My little graphics come up and I have those times so they'll go off automatically after a certain time. And you can see on the control panel it's actually counting down. And there it goes. Um, I've got my DVD store outro playback. I can, I can click any time. And of course my camera source is here. I just push selfie cam, overhead wide, overhead close up, MacBook Pro. And what's really cool about using the ATEM with Mimo Live is that I can put in, you know, eight different video sources into the switcher, but yet I'm not overloading the Mac Pro or if I'm using a MacBook Pro, it's really only seeing one video signal at a time because it's just the program out that's that's going into the Mac. So I can have all these sources at my disposal, but I don't have to overload the computer system with all these video sources. So the ATEM is taking this uh, video signal processing load off of the Mac, and it's just a really slick way to go. For program output from Mimo Live, I've got 
an Ultra Studio Mini monitor, also connected via Thunderbolt. And that is going out via SDI all the way over here, and it's running into the Atomos Shogun. And so I'm just using that as my program monitor so I can see exactly what's being recorded and going out live on the web right in front of me as I stand here doing the show. To finish this off, I'm going to show you the actual Facebook Live video that I produced so you can see for yourself how it turned out. Jason here uh, from the DVE store, live on Facebook, here to let you know about the Roland Back to School, Back to Work sales event. If you go to the DVE store website, you can see we have a big banner here. If you click through those to the end, you will get to not that one. <laughs> there we go. Click to the last one. You'll get to the Roland banner. And if you click on Shop Now, it'll take you right to the three switchers that are on rebate. The rebates are already applied here. It makes it super easy to purchase them. So keep that in mind. My purpose today is to give you a quick overview of the three Roland switchers that are on rebate. And uh, these rebates are valid through September of 2017, so, um, so jump on it, <laughs> okay? So uh, first of all, I wanna talk about the Roland V1 HD. So this little switcher took the industry by storm because it offers a really simple and solid way to switch between four HDMI video sources. At the same time, it offers a lot of audio functionality under the hood. I did a YouTube video review uh, a while back on the V1 HD, and it's had over 160,000 views, which uh, just gives you an idea of, of just how popular this switcher really is. It, it really hits the, the sweet spot uh, with uh, price and performance. So nice little switcher. Uh, the second switcher I want to talk about here is the Roland V1 SDI. So uh, this model offers a significant advantage for those that need to have cameras more than 30 feet away from the switcher. That's really the farthest I would ever recommend running an HDMI cable for any reason. <laughs> um, however, with SDI cables, you can go 300 feet with no signal loss. And as you can see, the V1 SDI has three SDI inputs, the third having the option of HDMI. Um, and the fourth input is HDMI only, but, and this is a big but. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. Okay, no, not that kind of big but. But, and the fourth input does have a scaler built in. So this makes it much more flexible because you can send in all kinds of resolutions and it all works out. Uh, the V1 HD, by comparison, doesn't have any built-in scaling. Uh, the, the third switcher I want to talk about just a little bit is the Roland uh, VR4 HD. Now this comes in at the highest price point of the three switchers, but it also has the biggest rebate. It's amazing versatility really does make it worth the price. Uh, you get four HDMI inputs, uh, number four with a scaler, and you can even input RGB component or heaven forbid composite video if you're dealing with some really old video sources. And the built-in encoding for web streaming is really nice. You just plug it into a laptop and go live. And you can see and switch your four video sources when you have them input right here on the built-in touch screen. So that is a really nice touch. And this is a full-on audio mixer. You have real physical faders here. So you don't have to buy two separate pieces of equipment. You got your audio mixer and your video switcher all in one. So as I said, super versatile. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to stop by dvestore.com to take advantage 
of, of these great Roland rebates that are happening right now uh, through September 2017. So until next time.